What's going on guys? Hope you're all staying healthy and having a great day. All right, so in this video, I was going to continue the monster rack build, but I realized I forgot a few pieces. I need a couple more risers. I need some more plugs for this server PSU. I left those at the uh, studio. So I'm not going to be able to break anything down and start hanging more GPUs. I wanna make sure I have all the proper equipment before I do that. I didn't wanna waste my time here, so I figure why don't we talk about server PSUs a little bit? All right, so let's talk about the material that these um, regular PSUs are made of. So you have your typical bronze, silver, gold, platinum, and titanium, all right? I have 1600 watt platinum power supplies, which is this P2, that's what that stands for. Um, in these power supplies, you'll either see a B or a G or a T. Obviously, it'll be bronze, you know, silver, gold, titanium, like that's what that letter stands for. Um, obviously, the better the conductivity of the metal inside this PSU is going to make it more efficient, which in reality is going to mean this is more expensive. So I went with the, the second level from the highest, which is platinum. The only thing above this, as far as I know, is titanium. They're just a little too pricey for me because these already run at a 90 plus efficiency. So this is good enough for me. Now, you might ask like, what is the difference? Like why is 240 volt better than the 120 volt? Like why do people say that? So think of it like this, right? You have 120 volts, okay? This is a perfect picture. I'm going to pull this up so you guys can see it. Say you have 120 volts, which is this guy right here pushing the amps, okay? The ohms, think of it as the material. The material itself, the better it is, the less resistance for the amps to be pushed through, okay? So picture this guy at 120. Now we have two of those guys at 240 regardless of the ohms which is the guy you know tightening the the path if there's two people on this side pushing through it's going to go through easier versus one but the better the material which is the ohms the less tight this rope gets on the path through that's just a, a quick little rundown from what i understand it anyways so now it comes to why use a server PSU over a standard ATX PSU? Um, in my opinion, these are built for constant power draw. These are built for commercial applications, you know, big warehouses or big offices where they have a lot of computers, a lot of uh, networking stuff. That's what these are for. They're made for constant power draw. These standard ATX power supplies, as far as I know, are built for your normal household computer. Um, things that you know you would normally do in a residential setting, nothing that you would constantly draw power from. Uh, mining rigs obviously would be better running off server PSUs. You'd probably have less breakdowns and your, you know, your power supply will probably go bad less often if that makes sense. The only thing it comes down to here, right, is pulling wattage for the GPUs and powering the motherboard and stuff like that. And up until recently, this style right here, Game Changer board from Parallel Miner, was never out. So you never had the option of a 24 pin to power your uh, motherboard off of a server PSU. I mean, they have some, uh, you know, you can jimmy rig some stuff with a Pico power supply. It's not easy to do and, you know, you can mess something up. So you don't really want to be messing around with too many... Um, too many wires and trying to do things yourself. It's just not smart. I mean, that's in my opinion, unless you know what you're doing. So when it comes to purchasing a power supply, okay, regardless of this being advertised as a 1200 watt server PSU, realistically, if you're only feeding this with 120 volts, this is only a 900 watt output max power supply. If you feed this with 240 volts, this will feed 1200 watts. Because back to that picture, if you look at the voltage and you have double the power behind pushing forward, it's going to go through easier, which 
overall makes it more efficient. All right, so that kind of sums up the, you know, understanding the power logic of it and when it's more efficient, when it's not 120 versus 240. Um, now it's, when am I gonna use this versus, you know, a normal ATX power supply? I mean, regardless of you using this breakout board or not, um, it, it still comes down to when do you use it? And in my opinion, if you're not gonna be mining in your house, okay, so I have right here, obviously, the crypto mining garage. That's what we're in. This is my old studio, my old office. This is where we are now. So I am not here 24 seven. I am not gonna have to listen to these things whistling or screaming really loud because they have a big power draw. The more power you draw off of these, the louder they get. Regardless of the power you draw off of these, they don't really make too much more noise. More or less, it's just the fan will be spinning a lot and you're just gonna hear a fan. But you're also, again, running something that's not made to be running at a high power that long. So you gotta take that into consideration. Um, these are built for longevity, as far as I know. And it would be a lot smarter to use something like this if you're not listening to it 24 seven. So when I, was, when I was hunting for one of these, first thing I look for is, I mean, the platinum server PSUs are pretty cheap, okay? Right now, yeah, the market's up a little bit, but these overall are way cheaper than buying something like that. You can get this thing right here for, I think it was like 60 bucks recently. And uh, I mean, overall, all I need to do is buy a breakout board for like an extra 20 or 30. So I was probably into this whole thing for about a hundred bucks. And this one, I was into it for about 350 or $300, whatever it was at the time. Now they're like just outrageous. But if you can get your hands on a new one of those game changer breakout boards, why wouldn't you go with the server PSU if this thing's not in your house? You know, it just doesn't make sense. All right, so now I wanna talk about understanding like when to use a server PSU. So a normal ATX PSU, right? Obviously like the one we have here, you don't wanna run this at more than 80% of its capacity. If you're running something at max capacity, it is not going to last as long as you intended it to last. You're going to burn it out faster. It's like driving a car 100 miles an hour constantly, the motor is gonna get worn out over time it's not it's not going to be as smooth as it always was so you do 80 percent of 1600 comes out uh just over 1200 like 1280 i believe um so you don't want to run this thing at more than 1280 watts okay um typically the way i like to think of it is gpus as far as i'm concerned i try to gauge them for about 200 a piece i know they're not pulling that but this is my basic rule of thumb. So not, you know, don't hold this against me, but this is my rule of thumb. These older cards, I say around 200 watts a piece with the riser and the card, okay? Just for a safe number for me. So two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, okay? 1200 watts in my brain, that's it. 1600, perfect. That works awesome, so I can run six of these cards off of that one PSU, no problem. Obviously, I could probably squeeze a couple more out of it, but just to be safe, that's what I'm gonna stick with. Then, what you wanna do is get a server PSU versus another ATX power supply. If you're going to purchase another ATX power supply, for one, in my opinion, you're wasting a little bit of money. Two, in my opinion, you're wasting that 24 pin connection that could be going to another motherboard. So you can't, like you could take, if you bought two PSUs, right? You could take one of those, split it up to another mining rig, purchase two server PSUs, and you're good to go. All right? When you plug these six pins in right here to the cards, along with this system running, the USB, when you turn this on, is going to send a signal to the riser, which is in essence going to turn on the GPUs. When you go to start this up for the first time, you wanna turn on the server power supply with this little button right here before you turn on your ATX power supply. 
That way, power is going to the other cards prior to power going to your motherboard. That way, once you turn this on, everything comes on and it's alive. So I'm not really sure why something like this always confused me when I first started. Like, when should I buy one of these? Why wouldn't I just go with two regular ATX power supplies? For one, if you're gonna go with two ATX power supplies, you have to get one of those little jumper caps or a, uh, a wire to connect both PSUs together so they both come on simultaneously. Um, only one is going to be plugged into your actual motherboard. Now that I know server PSUs are, in my case, the better way to go, I'm going to try to swap out all of these ATX power supplies with those server PSUs. Um, and then on top of that, which wires to buy? So this is a six plus two on this side and it's a six pin mail on this side. So that is, uh, that's what you wanna get for this type of breakout board. Cause they're only six pin connectors, as you can see. So fun little fact with these breakout boards here, the little uh, six pins. I personally only like to split those one time. So you can, you know, run a six pin to an eight pin and split the eight pin at this end, one to a riser, one to the actual card, or you could split it to the two pins on the card. Um, again, typically you don't wanna split these more than once. Obviously, if you can run a direct cable one at a time from each one to each uh, location, that's probably better, not splitting it. But, um, you know, do so at your own risk. Just be safe. You don't want to be splitting these up too much. Same goes with the uh, normal ATX power supplies. If you guys have any questions or whatever, just leave it in the comments below. I'm more than willing to try to help you out. I am in no means an electrician. I'm a plumber by trade. I'm just trying to give you guys my basic understanding of when I would use a server PSU over an ATX PSU. Um, like I said, basically the longevity the reason those were built is for constant power draws, not for your typical household stuff, um, which, you know, obviously they're a lot louder than the ATX. So I'm not currently in this space often. So this is why I am going to be using server PSUs over the ATX PSUs. I really hope this helped a lot of you guys out understanding a little bit about uh, 240 and 120 volt and um, you know the server PSUs versus the ATX and uh, stay safe and I'll see you guys next time.